I use this opportunity to, to, to motivate and I use this opportunity to inspire. And before we even get into it, I, I want y'all to know how much this community means to me. How much it means to see this community grow, to see our numbers grow, to see people hit me on the DM and let me know what I'm doing is making a difference. This is what it's about. It's about nothing more. If, if, if only a small population of us have it, and everybody else is struggling and we can't do even the least little bit to even share knowledge. It don't cost us nothing to share that knowledge. Then what was the point of us getting it? God made a mistake giving it to any one of us. If we are too selfish and don't want to share it. So I don't care where you at in your journey. For one, I just want to tell you I appreciate you. But never, ever, ever forget these words. If you're blessed enough to get it on any level, it's your ob obligation to give it back. It is your obligation to share what you've learned, to share your wisdom, to share everything that God's endowed you with. That's your legacy. That's what it's all about. So, God, just to keep it a buck with y'all, you know, me, my family, We've been going through a storm. And when I give y'all these messages week over week, a lot of time I'm pulling from my own life. I'm pulling from my own experiences, my own situation. And I talk to y'all about that storm that was coming. That storm, it's always lurking. It don't matter if it didn't hit you yet. That storm is coming. So you always got to make sure that that foundation that foundation is structurally sound. That foundation ain't going nowhere because when that storm hit, it will rock you to your core if your foundation is not structurally sound. And for the last two years, we've been going through a storm in my family. My mother, who y'all have seen come on this live a time or two, my mother, this is a strong woman. This is the matriarch of our family. She is a God-fearing woman who, who, you know, she's with God day in and day out. But two years kind of out of nowhere, her health just started to take a hit. And it just has been, yes, my mother has gotten sick before, just like all of us. But two years ago, it started to where it has been consistent and it has never let up. Week in, week out, my mother's in and out of the hospital. And just so you understand, my mother's like the Energizer Bunny. This woman's only 72 years old. Before she started to get sick, she was running around. You couldn't sit her down. It was always like, Ma, sit down. But for her, she always wanted to do, never wanted to depend on anybody. And just her being able to move around, live independently, that's how she wanted to live her life. And I watched her over the last two years, in and out of the hospital, doctor visits, to the point that she was bedridden, in the bed for months at a time. And just us, her children, her family, her loved ones, just watching her health go down. It is hard on us. And it's like, Ma, you ain't the only one going through this. Just know this. You did, yes, you are in pain. You going through it. But we going through it with you. Because we love you to death. And just watching somebody who you love being bedridden, that ain't easy. It ain't easy seeing this woman you known all your life who has been a pillar of strength become frail right before your eyes. And two years ago, when she started to decline, we didn't know why. And then as she's going back and forth, taking these tests, they tell her, your kidneys are failing. And it went from 50% to 30% to 0% that her kidneys worked at all. And my mother fought it and fought it and fought it. And finally, she had to get on dialysis. So for the last year, my mother's been doing dialysis four times a day. 
And obviously for somebody who's used to running around, somebody who's used to doing for themselves, having to do dialysis four times a day, it messes with this. It messes with your mind. It messes with the whole factor, the, the whole basis of who you are as a human being. On top of the dialysis, yes, we know she's going to get sick with that. She's going to get weak with that. But at the end of last year, something else started to happen. And we're like, what's going on with this? Because my mother, she started to feel better. She's going in. It looked like she was about to get a kidney. When it's time to get a kidney, they do every test under the sun for you to make sure that you can make it through that operation. And as my mother's sitting there and she's going through these battery of tests, they come to find out on top of her having kidney failure, now she has cancer. This hit this woman like a ton of bricks because she wanted with everything in her heart, everything in her soul to get off this dialysis four times a day. And they tell her, look, you got to take care of your cancer. So we're going to take you off of this kidney list. You can't even think about having a kidney transplant for the next two and a half to five years. She goes, she has a mastectomy, and she makes it through that surgery. And when she got through that surgery, that was only by the grace of God. And I'm sitting there with the doctors and they're telling us, look, she's got to go through four cycles of chemo. A month after her surgery, she starts this chemo. And after one cycle, it nearly killed her. My mother's whole system was out of whack. The same thing that was supposed to save her life almost took her out of here. I'm looking at this woman. She lost all her hair. She's in the bed. She's bedridden. Unfortunately, everything, her organs is shutting down. She can't control her bodily functions. Lost up to 100 pounds or something. And all of us are sitting there worried. Soon as she starts to turn that corner, she starts getting sick again. We're like, what is going on? Every time it seems like you're getting a little bit better, you take a step back. She goes in the hospital to the top of this year, and they tell her her heart is going bad. So this woman just done went through kidney failure, just beat cancer, and now her heart's going bad. So we got to regroup as a family and try to encourage this woman. You can make it. This ain't the end of your road. It's okay. And me, I'm a person in the family that the doctors, the doctors are going to speak to. They're always going to come through me. My mother always will make sure, look, talk to my son before we make a decision. And I'm on the phone with a doctor about a week or two ago. And this is a heart surgeon. And as we're sitting there and we're talking, the doctor is telling me, look, your mother's very high risk. We want to do this heart, um, open heart surgery on her, but she's extremely high risk for this surgery. And it seemed like that's all that man would say. Her arteries are clogged. She got to get a change valve. But he told me, I'm going to tell you like he told me, look, I'm not a fortune teller. I don't have a crystal ball. I know you are asking me, a hundred questions, but I can't tell you that your mother is going to make it out of this surgery. And I remember sitting there thinking to myself, damn, what are we going to do? Because I know my mother's going to look to me to make a decision. Sean, what should I do? Should I have the surgery? Should I not have the surgery? Is it even worth it? And I remember sitting after the surgery stressed out. My sister and myself were on the call with the doctor. And soon as we get off the call with the doctor... I start to talk to my sister and say, look, Nick, we got to have a, a conference call with the entire family because I can't make this decision by myself. I'm not strong enough. It ain't nowhere in the world that y'all could put this one on me. It's nowhere in the world that I can say, Ma, don't have that surgery because it's too high risk or go ahead and have that surgery and you're not going to make it out alive. And just as we are starting to, to discuss what our options are. My sister's like, yo, I'm not voting. I don't care what you do. My mother calls in. We put her into this three-way call and I start to talk to her. 
And I tell my mother exactly what the doctor told me. And I didn't hold back. Look, ma, you got to have open heart surgery. And by having open heart surgery, they got to go in. They got to crack your rib. They're going to change your valve. They're going to do a bypass on one of your clogged arteries. Bottom line is, I'm going to tell you like he told me, you're high risk and it don't look good. It don't look good for you. And I told her, I said, Ma, we're going to have a vote and we'll bring in all of the people in the family that we know love you, love you to death, and we'll vote. And whatever the outcome is, that's what it'll be because I can't make this decision. And just then and there, as my mother's sitting and she never said a word as I'm talking to her, she's sitting there and she's listening. She says, Sean, listen, I heard you. I heard every word you said. But I'm having this surgery. I'm going through this thing. I'm going to be just fine. I'm not leaving my kids. And I'm coming out of this thing. She said, I know what that man told you. I understand what he told you. But he can only tell you what science tells him. But I know somebody greater. I worship somebody greater. And I know that I'm not going into that surgery by myself. And I'm coming out. Let's do it. And I sat there. And I have never been more proud to be Miss Vivian Cook's son than that day. Because it is easy to talk the talk. But can you walk the walk? When the chicks are against you, when everything looks like it is 100% against you, your life is on the line. Can you walk the walk? This woman is saved. She's sanctified. And when it was time, when her life was on the line, she said, for God, I live and for God, I'll die. That's what I'm talking about. Movers, what are you committed to that you are willing to go all the way? When nobody believes, when everybody's telling you it's over, this is it. Can you stand strong in the face of adversity? Can you stand strong when nothing looks good and say, I'm going forward and I'm coming out. I'm coming out. And for me, just hearing that and the stress I was under, I hadn't slept in months. I literally get two, three hours of sleep at most a night. That was the first night in months that I slept like a baby because I knew, I knew that my mother's faith, it was greater than her circumstances. My mother's faith in that man upstairs was greater than her prognosis. It was greater than what those doctors was telling her. And I'm telling y'all, I don't care what you're going through. I don't care how the chips are stacked against you. I don't care if you're going through a divorce right now and everything that you have worked hard for, it looks like it's gonna be taken from you. I'm telling you like she told me, you're coming out. You're coming out. I don't care if you are going to court and the woman that once swore to love you is now taking the one thing that you love more than anything on this planet, which is your children manipulating your children's minds to the fact that your children, they don't know the difference between reality and the manipulation. I'm telling you stand strong because you're coming out. I don't care if you haven't paid rent in the last year and they are about to start collecting again and you don't know where you're getting that back rent from. Have faith. Know that you are coming out because you are. You are. There is something greater out there. There is something out there if you just believe. If you believe in yourself. If you believe in something more. God ain't going to leave you alone. That's what my mother said. Look, Sean. God didn't bring me this far. He done brought me through kidney failure. He brought me through cancer. Right before they was about to do the heart surgery on her. She got COVID. And he still brought her through. What do you believe in? What is greater than you that you are holding on to? Is your foundation strong because a storm is coming? Trust me when I tell you, 
One day you are going to be rocked through your core and you're not going to know who you are because when those bullets start flying, when you are on that battlefield, when everything is chaotic and everything that you know is turned upside down and you are now baptized in blood on that battlefield, will you be battle tested? Will you stand strong? Will that foundation hold up because the storm is coming? But I'm telling you, if you hold on, if you hold out, you are coming out. And I love sitting here and I'm talking to y'all, but as I'm talking, I'm thinking about this woman because to put it in Jay-Z's words, it was like Sean allowed me to reintroduce myself. Yes, I know her as my mother, but she is a child of God first. She held on when there was nothing to hold on to. And the great thing about it, when my doctor or her doctor rather was telling us that the only alternative was to do this open heart surgery. The only alternative was for her to go under that knife and for them to crack her ribs and do this surgery that would likely kill her. We get a call today because her surgery was scheduled for today. And they say, hey, we took another look at her charts and we consulted with her cardiologist and we feel we can do a less intrusive surgery tomorrow that would be just as effective. Y'all tell me God ain't good. But what are you holding on to? What are you believing in that's greater than you? So I'm asking all of my movers, every one of y'all, please pass the word on. Pray for my mother. Pray for people who we have never met who are in hospital beds right now. Pray for people who will never know their name, will never see their face, that are somewhere right now sick and might not know the power of prayer. If you a mover, pray for them. Because I truly believe that my mother is going to get better. She is going to get stronger. The woman that I once know, she's coming back to us. And I know it's somebody out there who's laying somewhere. They might not have God-fearing people, prayer warriors out there on their side to pray for them. So let us be that to them. Y'all are movers. This is bigger than just making money, y'all. This is bigger than just changing our life financially. There's something more. And for any of y'all who are going through it, I say this from the bottom of my heart. I love y'all. But you got to trust and believe you are coming out. My mother's name is Miss Vivian Cooks. She has heart surgery tomorrow. It is one part. And then she's going back in in another month to have a second surgery. Keep her in your prayers for any of you guys who believe. I don't care who you pray to. Keep her in your prayers for me. Each one teach one. This is our, this is our thing right here, y'all. And I thank y'all in advance, and I love y'all for taking time out to listen. Peace and love, y'all. Warrior Wednesdays, every Wednesday, 7 p.m. My man Derek Ferguson is back in the building this Wednesday, and we're going to be talking about how to make sure your business is profitable. So come with any questions you may have about spreadsheets and profitability. Check out this interview with my man Rich Dollars. It's out now. Now you can check it out on Spotify iTunes, um, YouTube, and um, I guess I'll see y'all on Wednesday. All right, y'all. Peace and love. One love to all my movies. Peace.